How many jaws could a lathe chuck chuck if a lathe chuck could chuck jaws? Hey everybody, today I'm going to talk about lathe chucks and spindles and maybe more. So this is the third in a series of basic videos that I'm doing where I take questions that I've actually received and try to answer them. You know, it's really basic stuff that a lot of us already know, but a lot of us, you know, we had to learn at some point. Now these are a lot of questions that, that the bigger machine channels out there just kind of gloss over and kind of expect you to know when you're when you're watching their content. Now as always this this is from the perspective of an amateur home shop machinist. If there's any actual machinists out there or other people who have knowledge of this sort of material, please comment below. I enjoy comments, enjoy responding to them, enjoy having the conversation with people. I don't think there's any, going to be anything controversial in this. It's basically just an overview of lathe chucks, types of lathe chucks, types of spindles that are going to be most common with many lathes as well as um, slightly larger lathes. The type of machines that you're going to find in your home shop. And as always, if you like this sort of content, please leave me a thumbs up. That lets me know you like it. It also lets YouTube know you like it, which means other people will see it. So let's get right into it. So on a mini lathe, the two most common types of chucks you're going to find are the three jaw, this regular scroll chuck three jaw, which I'll go into in a minute, and a four jaw. These are both examples of four inch varieties of a three and a four jaw. This one's from a little Craftsman Atlas. This is came with my machine. This is the three jaw that came with my Chinese mill lathe combo. Now there are other configurations of this. There's six jaw chucks, there's eight jaw chucks, there's 12 jaw chucks, there's even two jaw chucks. And if you take three out of this four, you got a one jaw chuck. It's not very useful. There's also no jaw chucks, which I'll get into in a second. So the most common, of course, is the three jaw. And the most common of the three jaws is a scrolling three jaw. These are sometimes also referred to as a self-centering chuck. And all that means is as you move any one of the adjustment screws, all jaws move at the same time, self-centering in the center of the chuck. Four jaw chucks, when you move their adjustment screws, each jaw moves independently. These are not self-centering. These are a screw type jaw. These are a scroll type jaw. So if we take this guy apart, We see in the back we have a main gear and three, I'll call them planetary gears. I think there's a better term for them than that. What you see is as you move either one of them, the main gear always moves. Now, if we take the small gears out, adjustment gear, key gear, There's our scroll. That meshes with the jaws, like so. And as it scrolls around, it screws the jaws in or out. Very simple, been around forever. I'm gonna leave this apart because I'm gonna actually clean it while I have it apart but I wanted to point out something. You'll notice that each of the holes here have a dot system. We have one here, two there, two dots, no dots there. I have the same thing on my adjustments. There's two dots, no dot, one dot. On the jaws, I have the same system. There's two dots, there's two dots on that jaw, one dot, no dot. That just means that as I put this back together, it goes back exactly the same way it came apart. There's always some slight manufacturing variation, but they're often fitted together. Uh, sometimes, depending on where it came from, it could have been hand fitted together. So it's, it's a good idea to try to keep it in the same orientation. And while I'm on that topic, you will also notice that there is a dot on the body of this thing. 
When I first got this machine, I spent a lot of time putting this chuck in different orientations on the spindle to find out where it ran truest. Truest, is that a, is that a word? I know there's a truest park. Anyway, where it ran the most true. You'll notice that on my spindle, there's a dot with a little T to make it easier to see. And there is a dot on the chuck. That means that every time I take this chuck off the spindle, when I put it back on, it goes in the same orientation that it came off. That was the truest, most true place that I found that it ran. So that is your standard three jaw chuck. These are certainly the most common. They're the easiest to adjust. They are not the most accurate, but they're plenty accurate enough for most applications. The next most common chuck would certainly be the four jaw. I said earlier, this is a four inch four jaw off of a small Craftsman Atlas lathe. This is a six inch four jaw. This is the one I use on my lathe. I had originally bought this one to put on the lathe and then I uh, found this one for a really good deal. So I ended up adapting this one to put on. Now these work essentially the same way. They have individual screws for each jaw and I'll show you how this works on the big one because it's easier. So if we take out one jaw Then we can take out the screw port part, and that just meshes up to your jaw. Each one works exactly the same way. Very simple design. I'm sure it's not simple to make, but very simple design. You'll also notice this particular jaw comes marked one, two, three, four. However, the jaws that were in there. As you can see, they were not marked as to which T-slot they can go into. And honestly, on a four jaw, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, they're all basically going to be made the same. Each one is the same. Which means that, unlike the three jaw, you can reverse the jaw and put it in backwards. And it will work the same way, but give you extended reach because of the geometry of the jaw. Now like I said on a four jaw it's not a big, as big of a deal whether each one goes in, this, in its original slot but I did because they all fit nicely and I and because I did some deburring on them to make them fit even more nicely I did end up going ahead and putting dots on for each position. So this is the third one it's got three dots it goes in the third slot and I am not going to take this one completely apart because I don't need to clean it because I cleaned it the last time I put it away. Advantages, disadvantages between a four jaw and a three jaw, the two most common chucks you're going to find. First advantage I already mentioned, on a four jaw you can directly flip the jaws. On a three jaw you usually come with an extra set of jaws that are flipped so that you can use the extended geometry of the jaw. As uh, I'm sure a lot of them this happens, those jaws got displaced from the machine when I, before I bought it, and so I never got the reverse jaws for my three jaw, which honestly is kind of a pain because that means that this three jaw is pretty limited in, in its use. It can only be used on the inside diameter, which is only about an inch and a half at the most. So that's the maximum that you can hold on this jaw, on this chuck. So from what I understand, it would be near impossible to get a replacement set of outside jaws. That's what they're called, outside jaws for this because without knowing the maker of this, it's not marked anywhere, it was uh, an offshore, it was made in the 80s, you might get lucky and, and the set that you buy would work, but um, from my understanding, that's not the case. It was always my intention to upgrade to the four jaw, so I really didn't worry about the outside jaws on this. Um, of course, you could just buy another chuck they're not all that expensive anymore, and that would come with both sets of jaws. This guy back in his puzzle box. I may use this still one day, that's why I'm kind of holding on to it. So besides reversing the jaws, of course, the biggest advantage of a three jaw is that it is self-centering. As opposed to most four jaws, there are some self-centering four jaws. So self-centering is, is a great thing because it's convenient, but it's not the greatest thing for precision. 
Uh, you will always get a tiny bit of run out in any three jaw chuck, unless you're Robin Ronzetti, and then you probably have your three jaw chuck ground down to a, a millionth of an inch. On a four jaw chuck, however, even though it's not self centering, you have a lot more opportunity to hold odd parts. For instance, you could hold a square part in a four jaw chuck. You could even hold it off center if you desired in some weird combination such as this. You could of course reverse all your jaws and hold it directly in the center off, off of the outside part of the jaw. See that? Out of the outside part of the jaw. Much more versatile than your regular three jaw. However, that versatility comes with, it's a little more fidgety to use. Anybody who's adjusted a four jaw on any part knows that it, sometimes it can be a little bit of a challenge. There is a reason that they have competitions at certain machining events to see how fast you can center, how fast and accurately you can center a four jaw chuck. It is a bit art, it's a bit science, and if that is something that interests you, I would encourage you to look up, uh, I believe Double Boost has a great um, video about doing it, A-Bomb of course did a video about doing it. Which do you want? Well, obviously you want both of them. If I could only have one, I would say, well give me the four jaw, because I can do anything in the four jaw that I can do in the three jaw, it just takes a little bit longer. Now, as I said in the introduction, there are other combinations. There are six jaws that are typically self-centering. Those are probably the next most common after these two. Ox Tools uses one occasionally, six jaw. There are chucks with larger amounts of jaws. Those are usually much larger machines. Obviously, you run into a physical space problem when you try to put more and more jaws into this space. But there is also a way to do it with no jaws. And I showed this in a short video last week of making a part. And this is essentially just a jig. Uh, you might also call it a pallet. This part takes the place of a chuck on my machine. It fits into the register of the machine and screws in, which I'll talk about in a minute when I talk about spindles. And you can then mount a part on it. Of course, it doesn't have to be this particular type of part. I mean, you can be any part you want to mount on here. But it just so happens that I was making this motorcycle part and I used the screw holes that the motorcycle part uses. It's a, an adapter for a carburetor. If I'd had the four jaw at the time, that would have probably been an easier solution. I also could have done it on the mill. However, I needed to do this on the lathe because I actually put a taper in this center hole. Can't really see it in the pictures, but there is a, a slight taper in there. So that was much easier to do on the lathe as opposed to the mill. Necessity being the mother of invention, we have the lathe pallet, which is not an original idea. Again, Ox, uh, Tom at Ox Tools, I believe I've seen him use one of these for uh, something, I'm not sure what. And it went into the mental toolbox and um, got used when I needed it. So that's a, a no jaw chuck. You can also use your collet holders for chucks. And there are also by design systems that mount on your spindle the same way your regular chuck does and allow you to use collets. But you can also, because most lathes have a taper in them, it will allow you to put your collet holder directly into the taper of your spindle. And that is a perfect segue into spindles. Now there's all types of, of spindle mounts. The most common, of course, on many, la many lathes is flat plate with three mounting holes and a register in the center. Pretty much any mini lathe is going to have that that system. Once you get up above the four inch mini lathe, then there are other systems that come into play. There's the A system, there's the the D with cam locks. That's like a Monarch has cam locks on it. Uh, the A system, I believe Kimber Zellick just bought a Pratt and & Whitney, and I think that Pratt & Whitney has an A system on it, which has a short little taper. Uh, if you watch Double Moves videos, I think his Harrison lathe, his newer to him Harrison lathe, has a, a uh, an L-type long taper spindle on it, which is kind of cool. It's got a, a long taper that the chuck goes on, and then a large nut that secures the chuck to the lathe. On older mini lathes, you'll have the screw-in type which is like this. It's usually just a 
a screw in collar with its own register built in. Those are very common on the smaller or older lathes. There are advantages and disadvantages of all of them. For instance, this one you really can't run backwards because it'll screw itself off. The three nut flat plate variety with the reference source. There's really not a good name for it that I've, that I've seen. If, if there is one, please let me know in the comments. Um, but your, your typical mini, your typical modern mini lathe, you can run these in any direction. Uh, cam locks, I believe you can run in any direction. Uh, the A type is basically a modification of this with a short taper instead of a reference, so I think it can run in the reverse direction. And I think that the long taper you can run in the re reverse direction too because it has an actual locking key that locks the chuck on. I guess the only one you can't run in the reverse direction is the is the screw-on variety. Again, if I'm wrong about that, please let me know. So I think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover here. Uh, all I wanted to do was a basic overview of, of how the chucks work and uh, and a little bit about the advantages and disadvantages of, of both. So if you got any uh, concerns or questions or anything you'd like to add to this uh, discussion, please do it below and um, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.